Hi, I'm Phil Mershon, author of Unforgettable, The Art and Science of Creating Memorable Experiences. Some of my friends call me Philly M because I play the soprano saxophone. I'm not necessarily a huge Kenny G fan, but he is unforgettable in the world of soprano saxophone. Well, my question for you today is, what songs should you play at your event? Or should you play music at all? Have you ever watched one of those silent movies? Way back in the 20s and before, in the early days of movies, they didn't know yet how to put voices on music, but they did know how to mix it with music. Oftentimes, it was done live. Can you imagine watching one of those soundless movies without music? You're missing out on something. And if you do the same thing, if you watch any of our modern day movies and you turn off the sound, where there's no music, it becomes a whole different experience, especially if it's like an intense, scary movie and there's not scary music being played, or if it's a really happy moment, but there's not happy music. Film composers know how to write the right music for the right scene to move your emotions along with the storyline. They can intensify the feelings that you're supposed to be having at a point in the story where maybe you're supposed to be feeling anxious or you're feeling relief or you're feeling stress or you're feeling elation, whatever it might be. Music can intensify those emotions and they can accompany. And the same thing happens at our events that we are designing. If you have the right music, it can intensify what people rightly should experience at given moments. When someone arrives at your event, music can help make them feel like they're at home. One of the ways I like to think about it is this. There's a, a nostalgia role that you can play to make people feel stay, safe. So if you know who your audience is and the types of people that are walking in the door and they hear the right kinds of songs that were maybe on their playlist at the happiest times of their life, they're going to say, wow, these people know me. They get me. This is my place. I feel at home here. And you want that. Music can help with that. It won't do it by itself. And obviously, if you have a large event, you can't nail the preferences of everybody walking through the door. If someone likes hip hop or rap and someone else prefers country and someone else prefers classical, you're not going to hit everybody. But you can hit the sweet spot of people at the event. There is a consideration. We live in a day of neurodivergence where people have all kinds of issues, and I'm definitely connected to people that have some of these issues where music might actually be off-putting, especially if it's loud. So be careful how loudly you play the music. Some people can't hear conversations if there's also music going on. Other people might get pulled out of a conversation if something comes on the radio that's either irritating or it's so recognizable that their mind goes to that song and whatever that song is associated with. So you want to be careful. And that's one of the reasons I don't like using songs with lyrics, particularly in sessions, because those lyrics can pull somebody out of the conversation they're in or out of the place of thought where they are. But there's other places where that's perfectly acceptable. Some of the other kinds of music. So I like to use nostalgic music to help people feel at home, welcoming music. And that could be a lot of different genres based on who your audience is. Another would be more reflective or meditative music. And that's when you're in a session or you're in a place where deeper thought or focused thought is needed. Now, this is very personal. There's a group called Focus at Will that's done a lot of research on the brain and music. And they've discovered that there's a and probably at least a dozen different styles of how people use music to get into a state of flow. And that's personal productivity, but some of the same principles apply to when people are networking. For some people, classical music at a slow pace is exactly what they need. Somebody else would actually prefer to hear 80s rock. Um, somebody else might prefer to hear more of an R&B funk with a high drive EDM kind of thing um, going on. So, Know your audience, recognize that you're never going to hit everybody, 
have some plans for those who are neurodivergent. Maybe they would prefer a place where it's more quiet. Maybe they, there's a room where there just isn't any music going on or the music is just so low and so chill that it's not going to affect them. So another kind of music that I think about is more motivational. It could be hype meaning like it's dance music, but I think of it also in the sense of there's certain songs when you hear them, like for me, it might be Eye of the Tiger, where when I hear that song, it makes me want to get up out of my chair and go change the world. And I think we need some of those kinds of songs in our playlist as well. So all this summed up, make sure to know your audience, understand their musical profiles, and while you're doing that, remove yourself from the equation. I'm going to end with this story. Um, early in the years of social media marketing world, I would pull out my saxophone and we'd have a live band and we would play music as people were arriving. It's what I do. I was encouraged to do it by our CEO and other members of the staff. After probably a few years, some of the staff started to say, you know, Phil, that music's a little bit too chill not quite energetic enough. We need some more energetic music to get people pumped up as they're arriving. And I'm thinking, no, our goal is we want people talking to each other and networking. We don't want them just listening to the music. So I ignored them. I didn't ignore, I just dismissed that feedback. Well, we started seeing similar themes in the survey feedback after years five, six, and seven. And so I said, hmm, there might be something going on here. And by that point in time, we had a much more clear picture of who our avatar is, who's coming to the conference. And I said, I'm going to take myself out of this picture and ask what kind of music do they listen to? What is going to put them in a restful state, a, a, a state where they feel comfortable with each other? They're energized by what's going on. And I realized the music that we were playing mostly wasn't on that list. So we re-engineered the music. I hired a different band. I still played on some of the songs, but I didn't play as much. It wasn't about me on the saxophone anymore. It definitely wasn't Kenny G, by the way. Um, that was not on anybody's list of favorite music for walking in. Um, and so we re-engineered the list and started getting way different feedback. People loved it. It set the tone. They were still, they were listening and some were, were talking to each other. It wasn't a problem for networking. So think about those things as you design the uh, music for your event. Let me know how it goes. What are some of the things you think about as you design music for your events? My name is Phil Mershon, author of Unforgettable. You can find out more at philmershon.com and please subscribe to this channel.